So in the last class, uh, we are looking at uh, 2D arrays, reading and writing from 2D arrays, how to use enhanced for loop, how to find sum of rows of different length from a 2D array. Strings is today's uh, agenda. We also took up a lot of exercises on 2D arrays. I think we all are we are all comfortable with 2D arrays now. So let us uh, talk about uh, strings. So what all we are going to look at today is uh, declaring a string, finding string length, comparing two strings, copying strings, substring operation, searching a string, trimming a string, checking if string is empty, convert string case, converting a character array to a string, converting a string to a character array and we are going to have some uh, you know, learn about contains method. So strings are very very important. You, know, you go to an industry, you work on any application, most of the data that comes in comes in as a string. Maybe it's the name of the person, address of the person or uh, even registration number is a string. So if you are very good in string handling, you can solve most of the problems quickly in the industry. So better concentrate more on strings. You know, we will see what is a string? You declare a sequence of characters, you know, Java put together in double quotes becomes a string. So we will see how to use all the methods to handle strings. How will you declare a string? This is a straightforward method. Use the string class S is in capital letters. You give a variable name and then you give in double quotes your value. So this is called a string literal. There is one more way of declaring a string that is you give string class name, use the new operator again the string uh, class name and within parenthesis you are going to pass the value. So two methods of declaring a string. So what, are this, what is the difference between these two methods we have to see. So when you look at uh, the memory management for JVM, Java Virtual Machine, we will look at the architecture of JVM in further depth in the next class. But for now, we look at the memory management there. So you have this uh, storage called heap storage. So JVM first uses the class loader, loads your class to the memory, right? So what will be there in your memory? What is the organization of your memory is you will have this heap memory. And part of the heap memory is also classified as method area. Method area, this is another area, heap, there is one more area called stack. Most of you might have known what is stack and uh, heap. But let me tell you, when you declare a string name Satish, what happens is this allocation actually goes to the method area. Method area is where it's like you store the uh, metadata for your classes, objects, methods and you also have this runtime constant pool wherein you are going to move all the constants, static methods. So Satish is nothing but a string literal here, right? This will be actually allocated in the runtime constant pool inside the method area. So let's say Satish, the value goes here and there will be a reference to name. So name will be holding the address of this particular value in memory. So name is going to hold the address of this particular value. Where it is getting stored, it is going to the runtime constant pool in the method area. So we look into further depth what the method area is. I told you it is used for storing code, metadata for your classes and objects and also all the static constants, variables and everything like that. So that is one thing, say suppose if I declare another name field string name 2 is equal to, again I give the same value Satish. So if I perform this, what will happen is, it will not just go and create another Satish and another variable here, it will just create one more reference. So name 2 will be pointing to the same address because Satish was already declared in the string constant pool. So every time a new uh, variable you are declaring, first it will search the string constant pool to check whether you have already that value available. If it is available, it will just point your name 
uh, field it will contain the address of satish Ali. so both these fields will contain the address of this particular location so that is uh, the very important concept you understand we have to understand while you are declaring strings the first way strings are immutable what do you mean by immutable once declared you cannot change it you cannot go and change sbtish you cannot do that and if you are changing a string say if i am changing name again if i declare something like this name is equal to i again declare satish space cj if i perform this what will happen is it will remove the reference to satish say name will be there it will remove this reference to satish it will create another location it will store satish cj and name will be now pointing to this location so it will just change the reference so this actual string that we have created is immutable when you use the string class there are other classes like string builder and string buffer which are used for creating mutable string objects but here we are going to only talk about the immutable string class okay so this one we have learned what is this string name is equal to new string satish you can use this declaration what happens so when i use this declaration there is an object created on the heap so it's created here and then satish goes here it's not on the method area it's first it creates on the heap and then the variable reference name one right name one it will be actually in the stack uh, let me tell you name one holds the address of this location when you declare it like this there are two places this actual value is getting created again say you don't have anything here let's consider it to be a fresh declaration then what happens is satish will be again put up here it's also allocated in the method area it's also allocated on the heap but the reference will be only from the heap but then here there will not be any reference if you create another variable like string name is equal to satish that name will be referenced here so whenever you are using this kind of a declaration two places two objects are getting created one is on the string constant pool and the another one is on the heap but the reference will be only to the heap so that's how they have designed it but when you are going to declare string literals like this on the top the reference will be again and again to the same value if you are going to give the same value so this is our uh, you know introduction to string declaration we'll see the methods methods are easy straightforward you give name dot length you declare a string but you have to give the parenthesis here you get some output 6 or 7 integer value find the string length you all know the difference between character array and strings right say the what's a character array you define character c is equal to you can define a set of characters a comma b in single quotes c so this is a character array this is also a sequence of characters but you cannot apply a string handling function on c you cannot do c dot length you should not do that only on strings you can apply string handling function string c is equal to a b c then i can apply name dot length or c dot length when you have a character array you cannot directly apply a string handling function on that array okay. which one that array is also c dot length see the the concept is he says whether when we apply will it work it will give you you can uh, weird results it's not that it will not work i have not tried applying it but i have tried it with c++ when you go and uh, apply a string handling function on a character array it will throw you some results that may not be correct so it, the actual thing is you have to apply your string handling functions only on a string please understand that. what is a string in c++ anything that's uh, terminated with a null character becomes a string right the same concept here too you should not apply string handling functions on character arrays concatenating two strings how will you join two strings so again when you concatenate two strings another string is created in another location and then reference will be to that location because strings created with uh, string is immutable so how will you concatenate use dot concat 
and then you give whatever string you want to concat here. So this will concatenate that with name one, joining two strings. Another easier way of joining two strings is we have used it many times, the plus. So name one plus the string. So what is this uh, uh, comparing two strings, it, it uses a boolean result, takes two strings either true or false, that's it. So how will you check that name dot equals name one. So when these two strings are equal, it says true or else it says false. So it's a boolean return. In uh, C++ we use string compare, right, strcmp, it returns three different values. When two strings are equal, what will be the value returned? Zero. When first string is greater than the second string, so you remember the string compare function, strcmp string 1 comma string 2. If string 1 is greater than string 2, it will return anything that is greater than 0. If string 1 is lesser than string 2, it will return anything that is lesser than 0. So instead of string compare, what we have an equivalent thing is compare to, t is in caps. So this is string 1, this is string 2. If both are equal, you will get a 0. If this is greater than this one, I mean, when both are equal, you'll get this. When this is greater than this one, you'll get something greater than zero. When this is lesser than that, you'll get lesser than zero. How you compare strings using the encoded uh, values, you know. It's like character by character, you take it and compare the encoded values for the character. A small s will have a greater ASCII value than a capital S. But here in Java, we are going with the Unicode format, not the ASCII format. String, substring in Java, how can you slice a string? You know, you just give dot substring. You give the starting position and the ending uh, index. So if I start from 1, it will start from A and it will not reach 4, it will reach till 3. So ATI will be sliced out and uh, displayed when you give 1 comma 4. So it will not uh, go and uh, also include the character in index 4. That is the substring concept. Copying a string, uh, there is uh, nothing like copying a string, you know, when you are going to have the string in the same location, only the address is going to be the same in both the variables. That's what I want to do. When I do name1 is equal to name, it's going to point to the same address, both name1 and name. Trimming a string, so when you ask users to enter some, uh, they will enter it with spaces. So if they enter it with spaces, what we have to do is, we have to use a dot trim and remove the trailing and leading spaces. So string name replacing a character. Say I can replace a character by using dot replace. So S will be replaced with R here. So it will be R A T I S H. That will be the output. So you have to use dot replace with the string name. Searching for a string. <laughs> exactly like what you have in JavaScript I guess. Index of. So what it does is it returns the index where this particular search string occurs in a string. So if I search for Java here, say it's also case sensitive. If you have a case mismatch, it will not return anything. It will return minus one. So if I search for Java, consider this to be small case and say if the index is 17 here, then what will return is 17. It will search for the string, the very first occurrence that matches that index of that first character will be written. Suppose there is no match, if I am searching for python, there is no match here, it will return minus 1. So you can search for a string within a string using dot index of. You can also search for a character like that. So there are again, let me tell you, there are so many variations to all these methods. If you go and look at your uh, online tutorials or any Java book, what kind of parameters you can pass to this methods, you will have so many variations. For instance, I can also pass the index, uh, you know, starting index from where I have to search for this string. So it searches from that index to this index. So it's, it, you can give a range, okay, search within this index in my search string. So there are so many variations. As I told you, Java is a big ocean. For the past 20 years, they have kept on adding libraries and classes. So it's not possible for us to learn everything. The need arises, arises we can go and explore those things. Converting cases, lower case or upper case, you have to use just dot to lower case, only thing is L and C in caps, U and C in caps. 
checking for an empty string. Say if your string is empty, nothing is there. Then you have to give this function dot is empty. Whenever a function starts with i, it's a boolean function. So is empty in the sense it will return either true or false. So if this is empty, so it returns true and this block of code will execute. Converting a character array to a string. As I told you, you are getting a character array, you won't apply the string handling function, convert it to a string. So how will you convert that? New string, you pass the character array. So now this A becomes a string, yes. You can apply all your string handling methods on S now. How to convert a string to a character array? This is the string programming. I am converting it to a character array. So I have to use test dot to character array. This converts it into a set of characters. So I declare an array to hold all the characters. I am using an enhance for loop to print my character array. Very simple. Another interesting method is the contains method. So it searches for a sequence of characters within a string and returns either true or false. So here, I am going to test dot contains learning. So it will match learning here and then it say true. Okay, this sequence of characters is present within your string. Any sequence, you can also search for E A R N A N G, it will return true. If it is not there, it will return false. Dot contains method, very useful and very effective too. Another very, very interesting uh, thing is splitting a string. You can use dot split and you can give a delimiter. Say split all the strings or uh, the words inside this uh, sentence using the space delimiter. So it will return an array of strings. So programming will be in index 0, in will be in index 1, java will be in index 2. So it is an array of strings, not a character array. And uh, how you print an array of strings using an uh, enhance for loop? String k result. So it returns every word and then I am printing that word out. So we have just seen some say 10% of all the string handling functions available in Java. Just an uh, you know overview of all the functions. Now we are good to go. We can start our programming. So I want you to take up this uh, particular uh, program wherein you accept username, password and confirm password from the user. And then you are going to check if the password is empty, you are going to say, say username and password is empty, you are going to say uh, invalid uh, password or enter the username and password. If the username is empty, you have to say enter username, password is empty, you have to say enter password. If confirm password is empty, you have to say enter confirm password. So if these three things are empty, you are not going to go and do any other checks on the input because no point in checking length if the input itself is empty, right? So when the input is not empty, you have to check whether it is of minimum 8 characters or else you have to display a message, check your password length. Check if the username is present in the password. If the password contains username, say it is a weak password, please uh, retype or re-enter your password. Something. Like that. Check if the password matches the confirmed password. If the password matches the confirmed password, it is not matching, you say passwords do not match. So this kind of a uh, you know, task you take now, you can apply all these string handling methods and finish this off in 5 minutes time. You have to get both username, password and confirm password. You have to go with these checks only when this is not empty, the input is not empty. Okay. Those who complete this can take up more exercises, read an array of names from the user. And you sort the names in the ascending order. Got it? Do not use any inbuilt functions or classes. And uh, reverse every word in a string. Say I have a sentence here, Satish teaches Java. What you have to do is you have to take this uh, word, reverse it, reverse it, reverse it. There is no string dot reverse in Java. So you have to take, you should not change the location of the word. Every word you take, reverse it, reverse it. Likewise, count the number of words in a sentence. Say I take Satish, how many times Satish occurs here? I take teachers, how many times teachers occurs here? So you have to give Satish 1, teachers 1, Java 1. If the count increases, you have to display the count. 
So let's check uh, the first program getting username and password. So I have declared a scanner class here, object of type scanner, and I'll put a message to the user system.out.print uh, enter username. So <coughs> how will you get username? You declare a string username and then you give input dot the next line. Next you have to give a message system dot out. I'll get an exception now. So three data items we have to get from the user. Enter password. String password is nothing but input dot next line. We'll get the confirm password too. Enter confirm password. And then we'll have a string confirm password is equal to input dot uh, next line. So we have received all the three data items. Now what we have to do is we have to check whether username is empty. How will you check that if username dot is empty? That's it. So it says username is empty system dot out. So you have to send a message that enter username like that or check username. So once when that is done, you will have to copy and uh, paste this. Say you can also use an OR operator if username is empty or password is empty or confirm password is empty. But I don't do that because if all the if one of the two fields are empty, then what kind of message you'll say? Fields are empty. Which field the user might be confused. So you should be very specific like enter username, enter password, enter confirm password. So that's why I do this uh, repetition. If password is empty, what you're going to say? Enter password or check password. You can use check password, I guess. And again, if confirm pass is empty, we'll say check confirm pass. So my objective is if any of these uh, fields are empty, I will not go ahead with any of the other checks. So what I normally do here is I will have a boolean flag set, boolean valid uh, is equal to true. So we will say it's invalid if uh, we will set this uh, valid flag to false when something goes wrong. Because I don't want to go and check the length if the input is empty. See, it's like the uh, now when you have created uh, internet web programming, you'll have this JavaScript code validating your input, right? If your input is empty, you will not submit the data to the server. We'll keep, uh, we'll return false from the JavaScript function. Some kind of uh, <laughs> idea from there. So. We'll uh, check if it is valid. That is the sense. If data is valid, then we'll do if username dot length length is less than eight. What we'll do? System dot out dot print a length. It's not username dot length. It's password dot length. We are not worried about username's length. Password we'll check. Password dot length, then you give password length is bad, something like that. Password length check error. Then we have to check if username is part of the password. How will you check that? If password dot contains username. That's it. See how easy it is when you use the string handling methods. So you're going to say why I'm not getting this. We'll say uh, 
uh, big password, something like that. Finally, what we are going to check if password, I mean, if password not equals uh, the confirm password. How will you check that? We should have this check. If not of password dot equals confirm password. Because if password is not equal to confirm password, we have to say yeah yeah but then uh, you know we are not uh, you have to check for a return a zero or greater uh, not something that is zero or not non zero right this one we just need whether they are equal or not we're not worried whether it's greater or things that's also fine what i'm saying is i'm only worried about whether they match or don't match i should not do this uh, i should not check if password is equal to confirm password. So if I do that, it will be comparing the address in this variable with the address in that uh, variable. So that will actually return true. If you use password double equals confirm password, it will again work, but that is actually wrong. Please understand that you have to only use dot equals here. We are comparing the password values, not the addresses. So please uh, try this one. Let's check whether this one works. Save it and then start running it. So we'll enter username Satish, password Satish, confirm pass, we'll enter SAT. So what are the messages we have to get? Password length check. It's only six characters. Weak password because username contains password. And uh, passwords don't match because Satish and Sat doesn't match. What if all the input is empty? Is that working for us? If all the inputs are empty, it should not go ahead and do all these checks, right? So we'll check that one too. If I enter empty, 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 enter username, check password, check confirm password. Can you go ahead and start the next program? Read an array of names and display the names, sorted names to the user. We limit to five names from the user. So how will you declare an array of strings? String name is equal to new string. And then you give 20. Now uh, five is enough for us. And how will you get all the input from the user? So you have to run a for loop, right? For int i is equal to 0, i less than 5, i plus plus. And then you are going to do name of i is equal to, what are you going to do here? Name of i is equal to input dot next line. Got it? Now you have all these strings out there. How will you print all these strings from an array? You can use an enhance for loop. So I'll declare a string result and then I'll pass my array name. How will I print everything out? System dot and then result out. That's it. So we have read input. We are printing the sorted output, but there is code missing for sorting. So how will you sort? You have to run this uh, double for loop, right? So it's for int i is equal to 0. When you use bubble sort, it's always uh, n minus 1 passes. So you can give name dot uh, length minus 1 i plus plus. And then internal is for number of comparisons you do in every pass. In j is equal to 0, j less than name dot uh, length minus 1 minus i because index minus i comparisons and j plus plus and how will you compare you know you have to use a temporary variable to shift and things like that but first you have to check whether string 1 is greater than string 2 adjacent string how will you do that we have to do whether name of uh, j dot compare to 
we have to use the compare to function here is uh, name of day j dot compare to greater than name of j plus 1 how will you check whether it is greater greater whether it returns anything greater than 0 if the name of j dot compare to name of j plus 1 returns anything greater than 0 then name of j is greater than name of j plus 1 so in that case what you are going to do is you are going to do a swap how will you swap you will use a temporary string string temp we will use a temporary string for swapping so whatever that is there in a of uh, j will go to temp and whatever that is there in a of uh, j plus 1 will go to a of j and whatever that is there in temp will go to a of j plus 1 that's it now we will go and run our code let's check whether this one works Oh God, somewhere there's an error. It's okay. I have used name. Okay. I'm in a hurry to complete this. So I have used the array name to be wrong. So it's a name here. So let's go and compile this, run this one out. Okay, we'll enter some names. Satish, Anand, Ram and uh, Tom and Jeff, it's sorted. So you take up the remaining three exercises, reversing the words in the sentence and uh, counting the number of words in a sentence and then also that substring password check. Thank you.